For today's card, I will be doing a paper piecing technique using a digital image from Paper Nest Dolls. Basically, paper piecing is coloring in your image with colored paper rather than markers, colored pencils, or any other medium you may use. So I think of it as coloring with paper. And as you can see here, the image on the left is what I came up with once I had completely paper pieced my image. And here is the completed card. And I also printed this same image on colored sheets of paper. The colored paper is what I will be using for my paper piecing. For example, let's say I want the bottom of her skirt to be blue. So I would simply cut out the portion of the image that I need, cutting along the black lines. Also, I would recommend to use sharp pointed detail scissors for this technique because it just makes things easier. So after I have finished cutting, I will use my glue pen to adhere the blue paper into place, aligning it with the exact part of the image on my white paper. So just to show another example, let's say we want the rose to be pink. Simply cut the rose part of the image from the pink paper following the black lines to cut. And when fussy cutting, it's better to turn and move the paper around rather than your scissors. It just seems to give more control and a more accurate cut. Once the pink rose is cut out, simply adhere it to the original image with your glue. Continue this process until your image is completely filled in with colored paper. So now let's move on to the details on the card. I will begin with showing you how I made the grass. Begin with a small scrap of green cardstock. Using your scissors, cut a shape to look like a small hill. If you have trouble with this, you can always use a pencil and draw a hill first and cut along the line. And to add some dimension and texture to the grass, I will be using a green Copic marker. Grass is so easy to draw because it is simply a series of drawing lines, X's, and check marks. So begin at the top and use tiny strokes in random directions. And you don't want to think too much about this, just draw tiny quick strokes. To add the look of depth and realism to the grass, it's best to go in layers. So after you've finished one section, begin the next section directly underneath. And you'll want to overlap onto the first section a little bit, so it kind of helps blend the layers of grass together. Again, not giving it much thought, just drawing in random quick strokes. To add an extra element of texture to your grass, use your detail scissors to cut tiny blades of grass on top. Cut the grass as thin as possible. Again, I would recommend these cutter bee scissors for this, which I have linked to in my blog post. But when you're cutting, you'll want to make some of the cuts deeper than others to make it look more organic and natural. When you finish cutting your blades of grass, use your fingers to brush through the grass to help it stand out and not lay so flat on your paper. And this is just a small detail, but it really makes a huge difference on your card. So now let's move on to the pinwheel. I actually learned how to make pinwheels from our design team coordinator, Sandy, so be sure to visit her channel. I think she has a full video tutorial on that also. But basically, you'll want to begin by cutting a square shape since I'm wanting a small pinwheel, I will cut a smaller square from a scrap sheet of paper. Find the center point of the paper and mark it if you choose. Then you will use your scissors to cut up to that point from all four edges, making sure not to cut completely through. Now it's time to fold. Fold every other corner into the center point to form the pinwheel. If you use double sided paper you will already have built in decoration on your pinwheel, but for this solid blue paper I will be coloring every other flap of paper in blue with my Copic. This will give the pinwheel more dimension and make it even prettier. 
I will also be adding white polka dots using my Uniball Signo gel pen. Now all that is left to do is fold the pinwheel in place and add a center purl to hold the paper together. Okay, so the final element is the clouds. Begin with a scrap piece of white cardstock and use a pencil to sketch a cloud or you can feel free to trace one if you prefer. But you want to use your scissors and just fussy cut around the cloud. To add some color, I used a gray Copic around the edges of the cloud, but this step is optional. You can position the clouds how you like, but if you cut one in half, it will give you two clouds as shown. Cut as many clouds as you prefer, and you can adhere them flat or you can use foam squares underneath for added dimension. So I hope you learned some fun new techniques in this video. And remember to check out Paper Nest Dolls website for rubber stamps and digital images. Also, I have all of the hop videos and information listed in the description. Thank you so much for watching.